I think that Puss in Boots The Last Wish has been out long enough now that I can use the coolest character from it without worrying about spoiling things for people. I mean, there will only be a minor spoiler in here anyway, and really that movie can't be ruined by spoilers. It's just so phenomenal. But anyway, I thought this would be a good excuse to return to the series that essentially launched my mech armor episodes in the first place famous animated characters as mech armors, but this time specifically famous animated villains. This episode will be narrated by three of my own original characters, but not the three you're probably thinking of if you watch this channel a lot. Swapping one of them out, and I don't have a drawing of him yet, but you'll pick it up from context in a sec. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's go! Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. I don't blatant care if those kids was being trained to be serial killers. There is absolutely zero justification for trapping a bunch of kids in a cage with a rabid gorilla. Ah, oh, don't be such a prude there, Dr. Champagne. It was all in good fun, not all of the kids died. Benny, please tell me you blatant back me up on this one. Hey, I already told Harold that that was a pretty messed up thing of him to do. Even I ain't did nothing that shady back in my heyday. But I also can't be that judgmental, you know? I did do some pretty bad stuff back when I was just making and selling mech armors. I mean, heck, one of my best buds back in my world was a supervillain who came to me for a mech armor he could use to kill his nephew. Well, what a coincidence. I killed my nephew, too. Of course you did. Benny, please tell me you're not about to launch into a bunch of stories about things you've done that's gonna make me lose respect for you. I think at this point your level of respect for me is pretty locked in where it is, handsome. Anyway, my buddy Hayden Unsen is this guy I met after he came to me looking for a mech armor to take out his nephew, who was this superhero kid with super strength and durability and whatnot. See, the kid's dad, Hayden's brother, was the leader of one of the top superhero teams in my world, the Olympiads. And Hayden was sort of part of the team, but they kind of pushed him to the side and made him do paperwork on the villains that they took down, making sure they went to the right prisons and whatnot. Hayden wasn't too thrilled about that, so he eventually starts making this plan to free some of the worst villains his brothers and other siblings ever put away. So he's been making up this plan for years and years, and the Olympiads ain't noticing nothing. But that's when Harrow comes onto the scene. This is Hayden's nephew, and the kid is doing some more street-level hero work to try and prove to his dad and the world that he deserved to be on the team with the big dogs. And this kid is a tank. His career is going from zero to hero just like that, and Hayden is worried that the kid is gonna get in the way of his plans before he can let loose the big bad villains. Well, you know what I'd do there is I'd let loose some of the smaller tier villains, less conspicuous ones, you know, and pay him a bit to go and kill the kid. Maybe even give him some power enhancements, if Hayden could do that without, you know, kicking up too much noise and drawing attention and whatnot. Well, you certainly think like a supervillain, Harold, because that's what he did. But none of the villains that he was sending after the kid was doing much. The kid was too tough for that. So, that's when he comes to me. Hayden wanted a mech armor of his own to fight in so that when he lets loose the big bad goons, he can help him take out Harrow. He comes to me because we already run in some of the same circles, and I do him one better than he thought. I make him an armor that can shoot power-suppressing flames. They wouldn't totally take away the kid's powers, but they would weaken him up pretty good. So, you bleating knew that he was trying to kill a superhero, and you not only made the armor anyway, but you flippin' leaned into it and made sure he could do it? That sounds like some right good customer service there, Benny. I hope he paid you well for that. Actually, not as much as you'd think. Aiden is a real good salesman and negotiator himself convinced me to give him a crazy discount. But to be fair, he also threw in a bunch of useful information for me on how I could avoid ever getting pinched by the Superhero Corrections and Placement Foundation. They was the folks who'd imprisoned the big bad villains that he was gonna let loose, so he knew their inner workings pretty well. Also, every time he came to me to get an update on his suit, he'd bring some moussaka or baklava, something like that for us to eat. I became a big fan of Greek food because of that guy. Well, I certainly understand that. I've been to a bunch of dimensions where the other food in those universes doesn't amount to a hill of beans compared to the Greek food. And that won't sound cocky when you've tried their souvlaki, my friend. Hey, yeah, that, Harold. You'll do a flip when you try to Greek fava dip. Oh, don't I know it. You'll feel like a hero when you get your teeth into a gyro. Your mouth will feel freaky once you've had some tzatziki. 
You're talking freaky in a good way, right, Benny? Of course I'm talking freaky in a good way. Benny, I would you stop bonding with the guy that kills kids and get back to the story? All right, all right, anyway. I made the suit the best I could, but the whole thing didn't go as Hayden planned. He busted out the villains, used his suit to weaken the kid and the Olympiads, but the kid still managed to use his smarts to take down the villains till he got his strength back. Then he saved his folks, and Hayden got taken down himself. He wasn't stuck in jail for too long, but that was the end of his big plan. Though I wouldn't be too surprised if he's got something else cooking now, I haven't checked in with him for a while. But give that guy a year or two, and he could be running the criminal underworld. Oro, wait a minute, that actually sounded kinda like the Disney version of the movie Hercules from my world. That guy, Hayden, he didn't happen to have, like, greyish, bluish skin, did he? He did not, but funny enough, I actually did once make an armor for the henchwoman of this villain guy who had blue skin. They came to me because she was from a family of superheroes, but had pretty weak powers compared to her siblings. They wanted an armor for her that could really amp up her abilities. She wasn't a hero anymore, Nita, by the way. She worked for this blue-faced guy fighting off heroes that came after him. You know, trying to stop his doomsday devices and whatnot. Doomsday devices? Why would you want to help out someone making doomsday devices? You lived on that planet too, didn't you? If you blew it up, what was going to happen to you, you clown? Relax, the dude's deck never actually worked. He was a real goomba. No idea how he talked this hench lady into working for him, because she was the opposite. I mean, she didn't make tech or nothing, but she was a crazy acrobat and could fight like a demon. She didn't even seem to like working for this dragon guy, but for whatever reason, she did. Dragon. Yeah, there it is. Guessing this lady, or at least the suit you made her, could generate some kind of green flames or something like that from the hands. Yeah, she can make green plasma come out of her hands naturally, but her actual power didn't really do that much. So the armor I made her cranked it up so it could burn harder than a blowtorch, and she could do crazy impact damage when she shot it out at folks. Yeah, alright, so this lady is just like this character Shigo from a show called Kim Possible in my world. How the flip is it that every single armor you ever made is somehow based on a movie, a show, or game from my world? Well, Benny here probably subconsciously has a stronger mental link to the Akashic Records than most folks, which means even if he doesn't realize he's doing it, he can access images and thoughts on every being and creature that ever existed and ever will exist in the multiverse. Lots of overseers and other folks make stuff similar to things in other universes without realizing they're doing it because of that same reason. A the Akashic... what? Oh, well that is pretty funky to know, but Errol, this ain't the time to be dropping big lore bombs like that on folks. I'm in the middle of a story here. Right, sorry Benny, go on. Uh, no, nah, I'd really like to stay on what he was just saying. If Some other time, come on, I'm sure we won't have to wait months and months and months before we get back to what Harold was saying there. Anyway, so I was souping up the mech for this lady, and I might have taken a sec to tell her that she could probably go solo with the tech that I'd made for her. But turned out this lady had a score to settle with the gal who's always taken down the Draken guy. Benny, was this another supervillain struggling to take down some kid that was giving him trouble? Sounds like he got a bit of a pattern going here. Yeah, yeah, but this time I was sort of on the right side of the conflict. I mean, I was also on the wrong side of the conflict. See, turned out the gal they was having a hard time with was someone I had already made tech for. They didn't know it was the case, but this red-headed gal had sent her tech guy to me to build her a mech armor with all of her best weapons stuck into the thing a couple months before. So yeah, I did make this green lady a mech that was pretty killer, but then I went to the red-headed gal and offered to upgrade her suit with stuff that would specifically protect her from what I did to the green lady's armor. Jeez, well, at least you did sort of the right thing by giving the kids some free upgrades. Oh, I don't know, Dr. Champagne, I'm willing to bet you ten big ones that he didn't do those upgrades for free. What are you talking about? He just said he offered to... He didn't say he did it for free. Benny, please tell me you didn't make this kid pay for something that was going to save her life against a weapon that you made for her enemy. Uh, hey, I didn't show you a picture of this armor yet, did I? And take a look at this. Hey folks, alternate timeline Benny Shop, you're still on the run from the cops for trying to sell those posters to people. But you know what, since I'm on the... 
Since I'm on the run anyway, I'm going to sell you even more posters. All the app from this episode, it's up as posters on the Popcorn Studios Teespring store too. And what the heck, they coming after me anyway? So you know what, I'm also gonna try and sell this hoodie right here. You see this 100% pure counterfeit hoodie? But it sure don't look like a counterfeit, huh? It's got real nice colors to it. Let's keep this going. I'm also gonna advertise the Popcar Studios Patreon, where you can get a weekly bonus podcast series, get art and inks a day before an episode comes out, and get hundreds of other inks and high-res art from the history of the channel. All of that stuff is linked in the description, and you can check... They're coming, they're coming, they're coming and I gotta go. Check out the posters and the... Oh boy! You know what? Let's try this in reverse. A movie just came out in my universe called Puss in Boots The Last Wish. Astoundingly good for a sequel that's coming out a thousand years too late, and there's this guy in it named Big Jack Horner. He's based on a nursery rhyme, looks like a mutated purple baby, runs a pie factory, and is a real bad bloke. You ever made an armor for someone that sounds like that? I didn't, but I do got a guy in my world that's just like that. He ran this big dessert business he inherited from his parents that made the cheapest, most processed garbage you ever did eat, but paid people off to get his foods labeled as healthy and whatnot. Worse still, underneath all of that, he ran a criminal empire that had the street named the Plum Plum Gang. I never worked for the guy, cause he had a real bad reputation for stepping all over the folks he worked for. The kind of guy that would shoot a puppy in the face just to get ahead if it would help. Yep, that blatant chicks out. Sounds like a real irredeemable monster. Hey, that's a real good way to put it. Anyway, I never made a mech for him, but he was once hunting after this superhero in my world that was also the target of this bounty hunt I did make an armor for. Oh, I see where this is going, of course. Was this guy like a Grim Reaper sort of bloke? Some kind of wolf person that seemed like the embodiment of death? Well, that's a bit of a stretch, but I guess given the weapons this guy requested, he did have a bit of a menacing reaper sort of vibe to him. <laughs> oh, you two just pray you never meet the actual reaper. That lady even freaks me out. Can wipe out all life in the universe just like that if she gets her hands on that world's overseer. I feel like we really gotta sit you down at some point and just have you talk for 15 to 20 minutes about everything you know about the multiverse, Harold. But for now, I'll tell you about this Lobo guy. See, he was already a pretty killer bounty hunter, but he was going after this hero, same one Jack Horner was after, who seemed like he could never be killed. He was this carefree dude who cheated death so many times it seems like he just couldn't die. The bounty hunter had some kind of personal grudge against the guy and wanted an armor to make sure he could get him. He actually told me that I was on his list of folks to get too, but that he'd scratch me off the list if I made him a suit. I didn't like his attitude, obviously, but I did like the request he had for the suit. He wanted these scythe sort of blades that could pop out of the forearms, but could also detach and clip together to become a double-sided staff sort of weapon that he could hold and spin around and whatnot. Plus, yeah, as you said, he wanted the thing to have a little bit of a wolf sort of look to it, and I was keen on having another crack at a wolf kind of mech, because the last one I built was... You know, it was pretty cool looking, but I figured I could go even more wolf looking this time, do it that much better. Was this another one of them times where you was also helping out the hero guy that he was after? Nah, I never made a suit for that guy. I did make one for a buddy of his though, this lady who wanted a cat-like armor. Pretty sure she was mixed into this whole thing with Horner and Lobo and the hero guy, but I wasn't really paying too much attention after I got the armor built. Especially when I saw the Lobo guy wearing a big hooden cape over the armor that I made him as he ran out of my garage. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was trying to keep my business under wraps to keep off the feds radar and obviously avoid paying my taxes, but when I make a mech armor, I want the person to be proud of the thing and showing it off. I understand that completely. You put all that work into the thing just to have it hidden from the world? Would make me madder than a wet hen. You wouldn't put a tarp over the Mona Lisa, would you? Exactly, Harold. Thank you. You know, sometimes I think you might not be such a bad guy after all. Really? Harold, how many kids would you say you've killed in your life? Oh, well, I, I guess that would depend. Do you mean specifically times when I've been targeting kids, or would cities that I've helped destroy count in there too? All right, you made your point there, champ, but at least having Harold here makes me look a little bit better.
To be totally honest, I am slightly hesitant to send people back to the very first famous animated characters as Mech Armor's episodes, because I really did not have the Benny Sharp accent down back then. I dip in and out of it so much that those episodes feel a little bit cringy in retrospect. But you know what, I'll make a playlist of my favorite Mech Armor episodes on this channel because I've got a whole bunch of them and there is some really good stuff in there. Check out any of those episodes if you want. And that actually kind of leads me into the positive or inspiring note that I'll end this video on. It's essentially, if you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you waited too long to launch. There are so many old episodes on this channel that I look back on and I go, oh my gosh, I put that out into the world? But if I had waited until I thought I was actually ready to start this channel, waited till I thought I was a good enough artist, illustrator, voice actor, whatever, I probably never would have started. So if there's something that you really want to do in your life, just start doing it now and trust that you'll improve in the process of doing it. I hope that's inspiring to someone out there. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Friday.